So how do you create good designs with AI when you're not a professional designer? Well, first of all, I spent a load of credits for you and tested every Frontier model to find the best for designing landing pages. Then I'm gonna show you how to take one of those generic AI pages and transform them into a professional design using a simple cheat sheet, no design experience necessary. Also, Cursor, the really popular AI code editor, has released some major improvements that you really need to know about, and I'll demonstrate them while we build together. By the way, if you want to learn how to build apps without writing code, check out switchdimension.com. It's my course and community where you can learn how to build an app from scratch, and I'll even help you personally get unstuck on weekly calls where you can learn from other builders as well. So when anyone can create apps and websites with a simple prompt, you need to differentiate yourself with a superior design and user experience. Let's dive in. Let's take a quick look at all our models here and the outputs. We have Gemini 2.5 Pro, Grok Code Fast, Claude 4 Sonnet, we have DeepSeek, Code Supernova, GPT-5, Codex. So this is what a generic output is going to look like from most models. So the first thing you wanna do if you don't want to look like it's been AI generated is don't use this kind of a color scheme. It's kind of done to that. Any kind of blues, purples, tend to be overdone. I'm gonna show you some tips for picking out good color schemes in a second. What you want to do is avoid overuse or any use really of emojis. It really stinks of AI generation. Code Supernova had a pretty decent generation here again, but again, we see we've got these little gradients on the icons. You want to avoid that kind of stuff. Now, DeepSeek had a pretty decent generation here, but it just kind of gave up pretty quickly. I imagine if we prompted it and pushed it to keep going, it would have come up with something pretty clean. Of all of these models, GPT-5 Codex, GPT-5 have the most distinctive styling type. They decided to be quite opinionated in the design and it works some of the time, but then it goes wrong a lot of the time. What we get from Bolt and Lovable is again, really quite similar, kind of maybe a little bit overdone with this color scheme, the purples. One of the best ones again, and I did a video on this a while back, V0. So what I like about this is it's not overly using gradients. We've got one strong accent color or primary color they've gone with. They're not overloading it with colors, nice and simple. You know what to focus on. And it's just pretty clean in terms of a page. So definitely my favorite out of the lot. So I highly recommend V0 as a design platform, but I also do realize everyone out there is using multiple different IDEs and they don't want to be paying for lots of different subscriptions. So if the design quality is pretty much the same across most of these platforms now, we need to think about other criteria to judge success. Things like cost and also speed. So I have a kind of surprising favorite from this test and it's not what I thought and probably not what you'd think either, but it was actually Grok Code Fast. So it's not exactly the best designer of all of them. I might not use it for a lot of my heavy lifting, but in terms of code implementation, it really got the job done. So again, I always talk about having a model stack, not just being reliant on one model. I might use Claude for some design stuff. You could use a more powerful model for planning and then something low level for implementation. But in terms of just front end design implementation, Grok Code actually just really did the job. So let's go and build. So today we're gonna to be using Cursor. In reality, you can use anything you want, whether that's Codex or VS Code with GitHub Copilot or Claude, whatever it is you want to use. The principles of what I'm gonna teach you here work in any different setup. So just go what you love. Personally, what I'm loving about Cursor is the fact that I can choose any model and I like to switch between models and not be locked in. And they're really moving from just being an IDE to being an agentic development environment. Up here, we've got a way to manage multiple different agents at the same time. They've got a new agent window that gives you a great new way to review. They've got background agents and they've got a CLI if you want to get super agentic and spin up your own processes. So the first thing we wanna do is nail our scaffolding or the skeleton of our site. That's just gonna really help our design and our professionalism. So, so first thing, we're gonna be using React and Next.js. So Next.js is gonna mean that you've got pages that can load really fast. So that's one hallmark of good design. We're gonna use Tailwind for our CSS. That gives us a whole load of pre-built built-in goodies. We're going to use Shad CN for our components. Now, the thing about Shad CN is it tends to look very similar, but it's just the component structure. We can actually style this whatever way we want with different color schemes, shapes, etc. So it's a really good basic starting point. We also have motion. It used to be called Framer Motion, but it gives us these nice little effects 
for our interface, which gives us a nice bit of professionalism. And then last but not least, Lucid icons, which gives you a thousand or so icons that can be used in your designs. They're really consistent and they're really useful for giving you that extra little bit of polish. So you can choose to pop open your terminal here with Command J and actually install these individually or just ask your agent to do it. I've got my agent over oven here on the right and I've set to agent mode and I've set my model here to grok code fast and I'm just going to run this. Now instantly you're going to see how fast Grok is at just knocking through the challenge. Like look at how fast it's running through here compared to other models. It's just so impressive. So that is blazing fast. In under a minute we have all of those set up with just that simple prompt and you can see everything is now set up and installed here. So Okay, you can see down here now in cursor, it shows the context window. So we've used 17, so we've used 17 percent of our context window. And what I like to do is refresh the context as often as I can, especially when we're moving on to something new. So there's lots of different tools you can use to get inspiration. But one tool I've leaned on a lot over the last couple of years has been Mobbin. Now, full disclosure, I was going to be covering Mobbin in this video. So I reached out for a collaboration and they were very kind to sponsor this video. I have to pay for all this code generation somehow. So there's a ton of different inspiration sites out there. But what makes Mobbin difference is these are actual real designs. So oftentimes when you're looking at templates or designs on Pinterest or Dribbble, they're these ideal scenarios of something that's mocked up, not a real interface that's been heavily taught through. So what we want is to actually see actual real life design flows. So if I click on Revolut here, it will break down all the different screens on the app and all of these then are actually categorized. I can actually search for best practice of what's been implemented across massive companies like Headspace, Revolut, Uber Eats and more. So let's say I was designing a learning app. I could use these screens as inspiration for my AI. I could copy them, paste them in, have the AI create something similar. You want to follow existing patterns and that's what Mobbin is great for. And the team have given a really nice discount to sign up in the description below. Okay, so after going through loads of different designs here on Mobbin, I think I like the style of what we've got going on here with Current. Even the logo, this image here in the right hand side, I think it just kind of fits what I'm thinking of. So, so you can get lots of different inspiration for color schemes here, what might suit your particular brand. If you want to come up with a completely new color scheme or get a feel for what kind of colors work together, you can check out coolers.co and you can pick any particular color scheme that you like. I kind of like what's going on here with this one. And you can even visualize how those colors might look together in your end design. So I actually think this color here is going to do well as an accent color in this case. So, so the cool thing about cursor now is you can actually create your own custom slash commands or custom modes. If I type slash here, I can actually go and create a command. So I'm going to name this command product manager. Sorry, it's just off screen there and I'm just going to hit return. And in here, I'm going to write my instructions. So we're going to use this agent template to create a really quick PRD. And that's going to be the basis of creating our landing page. You could also use the BMAD method or you could use GitHub spec kit for this. I just have rolled my own one here. It's really super simple and I've added it in the description down below. So you see now cursor has gone and created a cursor commands folder, exactly how you'd see that in Claude code as well. And up here now, if I just type in slash and product manager, it's pretty much going to invoke this prompt here. Usually in the past, I'd use Gemini or GPT-5 for this. If you want to be specific about what model you're using without having to remember that, you can actually create a custom mode. So I could create a custom mode here called product manager. And in the advanced options, I can actually set what model that I want to use. So I'm just going to go with Grok code here just to see what we get back from it. And I'm just going to hit return. So this initiates a conversation and it's going to ask me a little bit about my project, uh, the personas and the focus as a product manager, and then it's going to spit out a PRD. I'm basically trying all the different apps. I'm rotating through them all each given week. This week I'm using Super Whisper. And what I do like about it is this kind of display here. But you can use any one you want and basically have a chat. Just drop your brain as to what it is that you're building and the product manager will work with you. So I've dropped in my train of thought here on what we're building and I'm just going to drop that in. Again, that's all included in the description if you want to check it out. 
So another cool interface that's been added to Cursor is if I click and open the agent window here, there's actually a really nice way to run through accepting all your changes. So you'd basically just review that or then accept it, whatever you want. So I'm just gonna click keep all. So I've got my super simple prompt here, create a landing page, and then I've got the Levercast explainer as an elevator pitch. And then I'm simply added in, use dark mode and this accent color. And so here's our finished output. And it's looking pretty good as a starting point for a one shot prompt. So the copy looks good some nice little sections here. You'll see we're not using annoying emoji icons because we set up with Lucid. It's got these nice clean little icons. And you can see even when the page loads first, we have a nice little motion bounce happening as well. And as you roll down the pages, all these things kind of pop up using frame or motion or motion. So that's a nice little professional touch. So if you compare it to the basic prompt with Claude Forsana, just by adding in Next.js, Shads in, Tailwind, Lucid, it already improves the design and some extra prompts like your color scheme, etc., help a whole lot. Now, taking a look back at Mobbin again and our current site here, I actually just really like the implementation of this logo where it is. Now, typically when I'm trying to get logo inspiration, I'll do a couple of different things. Number one, go to a site like Dribbble or Pinterest and just type in the kind of logo inspiration you're looking for. Or let's say if the logo starts with an L or a P or something like that, I'll just type in L logo to give me an idea of some of the different kind of brand marks that might be used. And you can do the same with Pinterest. So let's say this logo here, I particularly like, I could take that, bring that into Recraft or ChatGPT so for instance, I just dropped it in here and then got it to recreate a version in Levercast. Now the logo type is too much the same, so I can't really use this, but then you could try some more generations. I tried a couple of different options here. Can be a bit of a messy process, but you can have some luck sometimes. So I've had some more success with logos at Recraft. You can actually just go and use any of the various different styles. There's actually some good logo creation styles here that you can use. But in this case, I just used a regular old Nano Banana, which is baked in. So if I click this button here, I've got the original logo attached here. And I just say, I want Levercast in this font, generate, and it gives me this. Now what's cool about this is that it's actually in vector format. So it's not a rasterized image or a PNG, which is great for a logo and I can export that as an SVG here. While I'm in Recraft, we're going to generate an image we can use. And also I want to build some unique iconography that we can put in that's just a little bit different from the typical Lucid icons. It gives it a slightly more professional feel. So using the vector icon setting here, I just clicked apply. And in this, I just said, I want a lightning in a cloud with kind of like a chat message thing just to show the speed. And uh, you can basically attach a color scheme here as well. So here's the image colors that I attach because this is the brand that we're choosing and this is what it's generated. And again, it's an SVG, so we can download that and add to our public folder in Next so that we can use it. Then I wanted to come up with an image I can use. And again, one thing that really sells professionalism is when you subtly bring in the color scheme of the brand into the imagery. You just know that a brand is a brand, not because you're seeing the product in it, but the style of it, the colors, etc. And then you see, we could also do mock-ups that are going to look very stylistically the same, just because we're pulling in the same color scheme. These two images look like they belong together. Now, if you totally want to go to the next level, you can go and turn this into a product video. So I basically went to open art. You can do this in GPT-5 with Sora or any other tool that you've access to. You don't necessarily need to subscribe to open art, but it says here, man walks down the street with a white, with a white speech bubble icons appearing all around him. So this is the idea of Levercast. You write one text and then it, you know, it can syndicate across all your different platforms. So now we've got a nice video we can use. We can copy that into the public folder as well in Next.js. So now I'm at the point when I want to refine. So typically what I'll do is I'll take a look at the page here and start to record my thoughts about what I want to change into one prompt. So I took a look at the page. I looked at everything I wanted to change and I recorded it all into one long prompt. So that includes the logo placement, adding in the video, some changes to the icons, etc. You can see this prompt here if you want to pause it. Okay, cool. It's starting to look a whole lot better. Now we've just got one icon here. In reality, I'd actually have a different one using Recraft for each one of these, but uh, we're just going to stick with one for now. 
Now, some issues here, I'd like this to constantly be highlighted to draw attention to it, and then this logo is a bit squashed here. So if you wanna call out individual things to change, you can use the developer tool. So if I hit Command Shift I, I can actually go and click on this, and then let's say I want to change this here. I'm just gonna click on that. Over here, it highlights exactly what needs to be changed. I can right click, copy the selector, and I could paste that back into the model to say exactly what I want to change. There are some tools that you can use that use MCPs like MCP pointer, but I found them just a little bit too janky for me. This method just works perfectly fine and I don't need to run an MCP or anything. So I could just go back over again to cursor. So a quick little change there. I've given it the description of what it is and then I've just popped, popped that in. Now it's looking pretty polished at this stage, but let's see if we can just push it a little bit further. So one thing I do quite a bit is I make sure most of my MCPs are turned off because they can unnecessarily blow text window and cause some issues. So I generally just turn them on as I need them, unless I'm running an agentic process where I have assigned a browser MCP or something else like that. But the, what I wanna draw your attention to here is tw the 21st dev and the magic MCP. You can sign up for that by going to 21st dev and then just installing the MCP here. What's cool about 21st Dev is it gives you a ton of cool components that you can use as part of your designs. So maybe you want to add some cool background elements or different things like that. They're all listed here. Okay, so the last little component library I want to share is React Bits. So if you go and browse components here, it gives you loads of different components that aren't necessarily always shown in 21st Dev some really cool effects in here that would look great on the back of any hero section. So I'm loving this pixel blast effect here. So I'm just popping over to the code and it tells me how to get it set up. I just need to install this and I just copy this usage in so the model knows how to work with it. So I'm just going to copy this here, run that installation, copy the code snippet here. So I'm basically just saying, I want to add this effect to the back of the hero section and just pasted it in. So we've gone from this, our original prompt and design to this. Now, this video took me about two and a half hours to record. If I was actually just not preoccupied with recording, I probably could have got the whole thing done in one hour. So we have our waitlist sign up here. Maybe I'd improve the contrast here just to make this a little bit stronger. Uh, we've got all our different sections. We created our icons, our custom video with our color blocking style in the background. So we have our custom generated logo for Levercast. We have our image that was generated that has all our bubbles jumping up. We've got color blocking of the accent color in the back of the image, which ties it into the site. We could do a little bit better on our contrast here against the background. That's just something we can add to the stretch list. We've got our sign up and wait list. We created our own custom icons. Again, if I had more time, I'd produce different ones for each one using Recraft. And then we have again our call to action down the bottom. If you wanna take this a bit further, I have a video from a few months ago. I'm gonna link that in the description as well, where I'll show you how to actually go and deploy a full site and then also how to set up resend so that you can capture all these email addresses. And this is where I need your help. I am looking for new design resources, new approaches, what's been working for you in terms of designing websites and getting good designs together. If you've got any tips or tricks or tools, please share them in the comments so I can learn and others can learn as well at the same time. Okay, thanks a million and see you in the next one.